Hello friends, welcome to the 11th lecture of uh, Financial Planning and Control Systems. So today friends, we will see a balance scorecard. The balance scorecard is uh, about a performance evaluation system, which we normally say is KRA or MBO of a particular, particular company or a particular person or a particular organization or a particular department. So let us have the uh, detailed analysis of what is balance scorecard and how it is applicable to the present scenario in the organization. Friends, we have in balance scorecard about the performance measure, measurement system, which is called as a PMS. PMS is a mechanism for improving the likelihood of the organization successfully implementing a strategy. So we have seen in our earlier, earlier chapters or earlier lectures that what about the uh, strategies and we have also seen that in, in these strategies we have uh, we have implementation of strategies so now what we will have is a pms like it is like a dashboard has a series of measures that provide information about the operations of many different processes some of these measures tell the driver that that is the manager what has happened or what is going to happen an example of PMS is a balanced scorecard approach. So what is balanced scorecard? In this rapidly changing world of business, the traditional measures of performance appraisal are insufficient, friends. It is not giving the effect because there are some financial measure, measures as well as non-financial measures. So sometimes where there is a non-financial measure, it is very difficult to, to, to <coughs> measure the same for the performance point of view. So the emphasis is not only on a measuring financial performance, but also on a measuring the non-financial performance. So there are, say, for example, service department. The service department will not be measured on a revenue basis. So they will be also giving that how quality services they are giving to the customer. So that is not captured in the KRAs when we are following the MBOs. If the MBOs are not properly captured, the growing international competition, the TQM movement, have all widened and the growing importance of the non-financial measures of the performance. So because of these two, the non-financial measures are very much required to be taken uh, attention so that the KRS or the balance scorecard of an organization is captured very carefully. So the balance scorecard developed by Robert Kaplan and David Norton takes into account financial as well as the non-financial measures short term and the long term goals external goals internal improvements past outputs and ongoing requirements as an indicator for the future performance so these are the things which is taken in the balance scorecard i repeat basically a financial and non financial in these two we will be having a short term or a long term external goals maybe the external customers or a internal improvements past output and ongoing requirements as indicators for the future performance. So balance scorecard act as a strategic planning and communicating device by directing the manager's attention towards the strategic goals of the organization. And it ad identifying the link between the lagging and the leading indicators. Of there are two kinds of the indicators, lagging indicators and the leading indicators. So balance scorecard measures performance from the four important perspectives. The first is the financial perspective that involves the strategy for growth, profitability and risk viewed from the shareholders point of view. Customer strategy that concentrates on creating value and differentiation from that particular competitors. Third is internal business processes that focuses on various strategic priorities for various businesses that result in customers and the shareholder satisfaction. So once you are very clear in the internal business processes, then it automatically will give the effectivity on the external environment. And the fourth is a learning and the growth perspective, which determines priority to, the priority to create a climate that supports organizational change, innovation, and growth. But this is very important thing. Unless you have a learning organization, the growth will be limited. An organization's balance scorecard will be effective if it is linked with best reward and appropriate penalties. If there is only reward, again, it is not good. If there is only penalties, it, it, it will hamper the, the motivational part of the organization. 
so how to implement the balance scorecard steps for implementing the balance scorecard first of all we need to define the strategy second measurement of the strategy to be defined third integrate the measures into the management system fourth review measures and result frequently once you integrate then you have to review review the measures and the results frequently then we have a pitfalls obviously if the kra has a pitfall or the mbo process has a pitfall or the or the uh, the uh, the old process of evaluating a person as a in a organization for his increment or appraisal as a pitfall similarly the balance scorecard also has a pitfalls first poor correlation between non financial measures and the results so sometimes if you do not correlate with the non financial measures with the with the financial measures then there is a issue let us take an example if the forms are not collected from the customers which are required for the uh, organization and the focus is not given on the collection and only focus is given in the order book then there is a mismatch of the financial and the non financial measures fixation of the financial results no mechanism for improvements if it is not reviewed properly measures are not updated measurements are overloaded and difficulty in establishing the trade offs so if these are the pitfalls but these pitfalls will work if you are not reviewing the balance scorecard very carefully so what is a balance scorecard this is a just a small example one side it is a financial second time is a customer third is learning growth and fourth is the internal business this four thing we have seen so it is divided into four parts objectives measurements targets and initiatives for example financial to succeed financially how should we appear to our shareholder this is one type of the goal internal business to satisfy our shareholders and customers what business process must be excellent third learning growth learning and growth to achieve our vision how will we sustain our ability to change and improve and fourth is the customer to achieve our vision how should we appear to customers to our customers so if we work out based on these four parameters our vision and strategy it will be it will work very good there is one example of one small msme company this is the way we we should look at the balance scorecard there are four perspective which we have seen over here this is i, I have just repeated over here objectives i we look at only one objectives increase revenue goal increase net revenue by 10 this is the goal given to the balance scorecard indicator financial statement so every month every week or every every quarter we can get this figure from the financial statements initiatives develop new credit policy for the distributors second customer perspective have a high average customer rating so what should be the goal increase the value of each purchase by 15% on an average what is the indicator value of invoices for each individual say an initiative improve the product mix and create combo deals this is the way you can also look at the internal process as well as the learning growth perspective so friends this is what uh, i would like to have to inform you for uh, the balance co card as i say friends keep learning grow yourself because sky is a beginning there is no limit friends so let us meet in our 12th lecture with some different topic that is the topic will be on just in time total quality management and cim so friends till then we will be tuned or stay tuned to our youtube channel and keep learning thank you very much friends